Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam and this video is all about gardenias. Okay, so let's talk gardenias. The first thing you need to know about gardenias is just how many varieties there are. If you want a low ground cover variety, those are available. If you want ones that get three to four feet, those are available. If you want the more traditional ones, that can get head high or taller, those are available as well. There are variegated gardenias, like this variegated radicans, which stays low to the ground. And then there are variegated upright ones that I don't have one right this minute to show you, but they're very similar to this August Beauty gardenia, but with a variegated leaf. In the ground cover varieties, we have this one called radicans, which is stays low to the ground, might get one to two feet tall over time, maybe three, four feet wide. It can be kept even smaller than that. This is a variegated radicans. It's the same as the green one in terms of the height and width that we'll get and it still gets the fragrant flowers exactly the same but it has this variegated foliage on it which is quite nice and then in the three to four foot category we have this one called frost proof which is extremely popular it's kind of an industrial variety it can probably be grown a half a zone higher than the rest of them this one's absolutely loaded with flower buds right now and then we have climbs hardy climbs has this single flower rather than the traditional double flowers. But it blooms twice a year. It blooms in the spring and in the fall, so I think it more than makes up for having the single flower by flowering more than the rest of them. But those two varieties, Frost Proof and Climbs Hardy, you'll get three to four feet in height and can be kept smaller than that. And then this is August Beauty. This one's been around for a long time. It'll get head high. The flowers are much larger on it. That's one thing, is the larger the plant grows, the larger the flowers are. And from here, there's ones that get even taller than this. There's one called Mystery that gets eight feet tall that I'm currently out of. It gets even a larger flower than this. It's not quite as cold hardy as August Beauty. And then from there, there's one called Amy that's a tropical one. Uh, if you buy one of those in a store, you're gonna need to bring it in in the winter unless you're in zone nine or 10. So as you can see, no matter what the space you're growing them in, you can find one that will fit it, a ground cover one, a mid-sized one or very tall ones. The very tall ones probably go in the corner of your foundation. The other things you need to know about gardenias is they're evergreen. They keep their foliage year round. Most of them are gonna be zone seven to 10 or zone seven to 11. Frost proof, which I'm holding right here, could definitely be tried in 6B as a foundation plant, not out in open space where the wind could get it, but it'd definitely be worth a try. The other things you need to know about gardenias is they hate wet feet. They cannot sit in water. These things need to be mounded up almost no matter what your soil type is. Uh, we grow these in a pine bark soil conditioner, which is a chunky pine bark. You probably won't be able to see very well there, but it stays moist in this container, but it definitely drains the majority of the water through it. So I mix that pine bark soil conditioner into whatever soil I'm pulling out of the hole, and then I'm mounding them up and you know leaving them up three, four inches above the grade, and then definitely not over mulching. Don't put any mulch up on the stems of these. In terms of problems, root rot is definitely a problem. And if you'll plant it like I just told you to plant it, you can probably avoid that. The other big issue with gardenias, if they don't have a lot of air movement around them, is they're very susceptible to white flies. And we'll start to see that in my area pretty soon. When it hits 90 degrees consistently, we'll start to see white flies on the back of the leaves. And they can be very pesky. <laughs> there are organic and chemical controls for them, but if you get them one year, you probably know that you're probably going to get them every year in that spot you have them in. So just be prepared for that and be prepared to spray them uh, with whatever technique you're using. You can actually use a really powerful shot of water. It can take probably three quarters of them off and kill them. They're soft bodied insects. So if you get under them and really hose it off well, you can control a lot of them that way. Another nice feature of gardenias is they're pretty much deer proof. Deer just do not mess with gardenias. That's true of a lot of fragrant plants. In terms of the time of year they're gonna flower, all these varieties are kind of slow to wake up. Gardenias definitely like it hot. It'll, it takes a little while in the spring for them to start putting on new growth. They bloom on new growth. So as soon as they start to put on any growth, they, they bud up pretty quickly. And we'll get a mid to late spring, early summer flowering. Most of these varieties will have some residual flowers during the summer. The old fashioned varieties like August Beauty definitely bloom more consistently through the summer. Some of these newer varieties tend to bloom all out at one time. But some of them like Climbs Hardy are good about re-blooming in the fall when the temperature changes again. So what are you waiting for? If you're in an area where you can grow gardenias, give them a shot.
Thank you for watching my video, and if it was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also, comment below with any questions you have about gardenias. Thanks for watching.